Hello, and welcome to the show. I am back on automation today, building a rather highly requested vehicle. I'm going to attempt to create a three-cylinder hot hatch. A lot of people have wanted me to build a car with three-cylinder engines, so I'm going to give it a try. We're going to build this as a modern hot hatch, though. We're going to go for, well, I say a modern hot hatch. A lot of the hatchback bodies in the game currently are a bit uh, pants. I'll be honest, like this sort of thing. Uh, there's not too much. I, I, I personally can't do much with the front end of this car to make it even vaguely look half decent. Now, there may well be people far cleverer than I, far better than I at this game to make this look okay. I just can't. <laughs> I can't. Or this one. They're just yeah, uninspiring shapes to work with to begin with, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, the hatchback that I'm going to end up working with, uh, I know it says convertible here, but there is a hatchback version of the car, kind of think BMW 1 Series, that sort of style hatchback, that's what we're going to go for. Uh, right, panel material, we are going to go for, I think we're going for partial, partial aluminium, I think it'll be lighter, the, I don't actually know what it's going to be lighter than steel, that's for sure. Um, slightly more time-consuming, slightly less corrosion-resistant, but I assume a bit cheaper. I don't know. We're going to go for partial aluminium anyway, I figure. We'll, we'll try and keep it vague. I'm not going to go for maximum everything and then go too crazy with the engine and, and car. And, I say too crazy. We're going to try and get a lot of power out of a three-cylinder, but uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the power material, chassis material. We'll go for light, light AHS steel. Sounds good to me. Um... Should I go for a rear-wheel drive? Yeah, let's go for a rear-wheel drive um, hot hatch. There needs to be more rear-wheel drive hot, but hot hatches, sorry. So we'll go front, longitudinal. We will have double wishbone suspension at the front. I mean, I want sportiness at the end of the day. We don't quite want the expense of a pushrod thing. I might stick with uh, multi-link, though. That seems like, seems like a pretty good compromise, actually, for, for making a car... Um, sporty without compromising it too heavily in other areas right there we go that's the hatchback body that we are going to be working with there is an estate version of the car there is the sedan version of the vehicle and so on you can have a convertible if you like uh, there's there's two different versions of the hatchback in fact you can have a three door or a five door version seeing as it's you know the same length i might as well bloody go <laughs> I might actually go. It makes sense to have a five door, really. So that is what we shall do. Colours, of course, for our vehicle. Shall we go something different? We'll go something different on this car. What colour do we want? Ooh, shall we go for a nice? Uh, shall we go for a nice blue, or shall we go for an offensive blue? Uh, <laughs> or shall we? Shall we go for something completely different? You know what? Let's go for a nice purple hatchback. Sure, or do we go, uh, maybe go for red actually, change, change my mind, I, I've changed my mind a lot so far in all of this, so we'll go for, a, we'll go for a nice, a nice dark red, there we go, nice dark red hot hatch, I, I, I don't know how much difference me making the car smaller will actually make to it overall, but you know what, we can do it, so why not, I should not do too much to this vehicle, shall we just extend the wheel arches out a little bit, there we go, make it look a little bit meaner, ooh, can we make the, ooh, can we, oh, we can't squish it down. It's a <laughs> okay, it looks very odd when you do that to it. Um, let's, let's maybe not do that. Uh, it can't actually do... Ooh! <laughs> That's a very long nose car. It can't actually do very much with this body. Oh, we can kind of bring that in there if I want. I don't actually think... Oh, I've buggered that one up completely. Oh, crap. How do I... I want to bring that back so it's vaguely level. There we go. That works. That works. Right. Onwards. Now... I am going to, I've, I'm determined this time around to go for a different sort of front bumper. I've, I've been making a very similar style of front bumper to a lot of my cars, and it kind of worked. It just looks, I would say, fairly decent. It's certainly not been the horrendous eyesore that we have had from some previous cars. But today, we're going to try something different. I'm going to have a go at kind of a alpha-ish style front front end on the car. I don't know if this is going to... Like, I, I had a quick play around before starting to film this and uh, was playing around with a couple of the different vents to see if I could vaguely get it to do what I wanted it to and it turned out okay then. Now whether this one is going... Uh, it turned out okay and but that was on a very different body shape that I had it going on <laughs> so we will see what it looks like on, on this car. So we're going to have like this centre um, triangle if you like, uh, probably get some headlights on the go. What do we want to go for in terms of... These are weird headlights. Are these new? I don't remember these. 
Um, actually, <laughs> that's quite quite Alfa Romeo y uh, front end. Maybe they're a little, I got them a little bit crazy in terms of a uh, headlight size there. Um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we do want them a little bit wide. Maybe we don't want them quite as tall. Maybe a little bit, maybe not quite that wide. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the best when it comes to uh, to designing cars. I should probably should probably put that out there. Uh, in fact, you will probably know if uh, you will you, if you if you haven't watched my videos before, you will very quickly become aware that I'm not exactly great at designing cars. I just have fun on this game. That's uh, at the end of the day. That's the important thing, really, isn't it? To have fun with the building of your vehicles. Maybe if we make this a little bit wider. Maybe that'll look a tad... Not too wide, though. If you go too wide, it looks very dumb. However, <laughs> there is that fine that fine line. Uh, it's certainly a different front end to the cars that I've built before. Certainly a different front end and different headlights than the normal stuff that we've gone for. So you know what? I'm okay with that. I am I am okay with that. Tail lights. Ooh. I think there's been new stuff added. Uh, <laughs> I think there has. Of course, this game is still in beta and so on. There is plenty of updates going on for it. Uh, I don't recognise these either. And actually, I quite like them. <laughs> I do quite like these uh, these brake lights. That actually works really quite nicely for me. Um, does sit a little bit wonky on the rear bumper. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, indicators. Let's go and grab some of these. Stick them plonk them on the side of the car like so sure uh now are we going what are we going to do with the back of the car let's get some or one of these on each side uh sure we'll go for one of those on each side we will then go for uh i tend to normally have just something like that along the bottom it's not massively inspired at the back of the car however it doesn't actually uh, doesn't look too bad apart from the weird glitch that's still the weird glitch that seems to still be persisting when stuff gets it seems to only be with the grills like when you use the vents it doesn't seem to happen but the grills when you stretch them out over a certain size it kind of ends up making the car a little bit see through which is peculiar but there we go um exhaust tip ooh shall we go for like a center mounted exhaust <laughs> yes Let's go. Let's go for a giant centre-mounted exhaust on the car because why not? Why maybe not quite so large? But just go for something a little bit different because you know I could have normal exhaust placements or I could do something strange. And at Fair Race Industries, it's got to be something a little bit strange. Uh, right. Uh, what else are we going to be needing? Probably none of those. Uh, we could get a mighty wing, although it's going to look weird on this car, because I bet I'm not going to be able to place it. Like, oh, <laughs> Yes, that is where you need a wing. Most definitely, that is, that is how wings work. <laughs> Hold on. I've had a dumb idea. Does the game let us... Does it let us do... Come on. <gasps> it does... Hold on. We can make it look like something out of Robot Wars. <laughs> oh, can we flip you? Will it let me flip that around? Oh, it might struggle letting me flip this around. Oh, if it could... Oh, what if we put it... Oh, no, no. If I could flip it the other way around, we could have like a scoop, and then we really could make something out of Robot Wars, as it is not quite. Uh, oh, we're going to need some wing mirrors on our car. Uh, ooh, got to put them on for all, uh, from this side. But sometimes it doesn't quite seem to place them the right way around, but uh, normally you change the side of the car you're working on, and that will do the job. Uh, it can go on there. Perfect. And then we can have number plates. I don't actually know where I'm going to put the number plate at the front. I mean, technically, well, mm, it, it, it's not going to be... I don't want that number plate. It's not going to be that eco, but it is a three-cylinder, which is, I guess, something c compared to the normal things that I end up creating. Uh, so we will go with eco. Where do you? Where do we put number plates on alpha-style grills? I guess down the bottom here somewhere. Maybe if I put the number plate f uh, in, and then we can kind of slightly reshape, reshuffle that so that it sits up there. It doesn't quite sit so well with the shape of... The yeah, I, I think I managed to screw up the body lines a little bit when I uh, fiddled around with it. But there we go. And a badge of some sort. I actually think I've been putting the... Uh, God, where was the Fair Race Industries badge going? Oh, you were using the... Uh, oh, which one were we using? 
Is it that one, or was it? Oh, it might be that one actually. Ferret Industries badge, of course. Got to have a bird of prey. Uh, that can go on the top there. Perfect. Now we're gonna stick one around the back. Uh, I would say that this will be the Ferris Industries badge from now on. However, I know I'll forget about it in about four episodes' time. Maybe not even that. About four hours' time, I'll have forgotten. So, <laughs> there we go. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, it's a slightly different front end. I'm not 100% sure. I'm ha eh, I'm kind of happy with it. I'm kind of happy with it. It's different. It's, it's different. The back's not too terrible on this for once. The back's not too bad at all. I, I do like those lights. Those lights are great. <laughs> Those lights are probably going to be my go-to lights now with the car. Anyway, that's the vehicle done. Now, the important thing, the engine. We're going to go for an all-aluminium three-cylinder, I think, on here. Dual overhead can. Now, this is the, the hot hatch version, if you like. So we're going to try and get a good amount of power. A good amount of power out of this, if we can. Uh, the A aluminium silica, I believe, ALSI is slightly lighter, but can, uh, but a bit more expensive. So we'll we'll compromise and we'll just go aluminium in there. Now we are probably going to want a nice little Revy engine. That's always good fun to play around with. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're not going to be getting eight nine hundred horsepower out of it. So we don't need to go crazy crazy with the with the components. So I think we can probably go for forged steel. We're not going to want cast, but we can get away with forged steel. Uh, likewise, we can probably get away with lightweight forged uh, in all of that. Pistons, uh, we can probably again stick with lightweight forged. I think so. Now, engine size. Oh, I've got the engine size over here. My bad. Uh, we are going to be doing the car rear-wheel drive. How big can I get the engine? Ooh, okay. So we are a little bit limited. It's only going to be a two and a half litre. That's like two and a half litre. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, that's that. We can work with two and a half liters. We can work with two and a half liters, indeed. Uh, we'll come back with all of this. Yeah, we'll go for variable uh, valve timing. Uh, we will, of course, be turbocharging it. We're going to be wanting to get uh, definitely going to be wanting to be getting some turbocharging on the go with this uh, direct injection. I mean, with the, with the sort of vehicle that we are that we are building here, this is, makes sense to be going down all of that. Uh, all of that route. Um, I think, to be fair, uh, multi-point EFI, I actually don't know the huge difference. Multi-point EFI and direct injection uh, do very similar things. To similar things in terms of power, direct injection more efficient. Makes sense in the modern world. We will go for, well, it says premium, it would be what regular fuel, certainly what regular fuel would be like here in England. Uh, so we'll go for bypass valve, single exhaust, exhaust diameter, well, we'll We'll fiddle around with that when we got the engine up and running. High flow. Um, ah, bugger it straight through everything. Right, we are blowing... Ooh, we are blowing everything to bits over here. Uh, okay, we're RPMing... RP, oh, okay. I... Ooh, maybe it doesn't like... I'm not sure we're going to be able to get away with a two and a half litre. We've got to... Ooh, we've got to really bring that down. Okay, so if we bring the stroke down... Okay, it's a two litre... Okay, okay all right, let's go down to a 1.8. We go down to... Uh, the, the, my thinking behind this, if we go down to a 1.8, we can probably get away, yeah, with 10,000 RPM. Now, to me, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun can be had. Not quite going to get to 10,000, but we'll get to 8,000 RPM on this engine. That is more like it. Uh, we can get away with a much more compression going on here. So it's 160, ooh, 180 horsepower. You know, that's not too shabby out of a, uh, <laughs> out of a three cylinder. What happens when we go and yank that? Okay, so we put the cam profile up too far. We might have to just bring this down a smidge. Okay, no, it's, it's, it's alright for now. It's alright for now. It's 260 horsepower. I'm liking this. <laughs> I'm liking this very much. Uh, now, if we can get the RPM up a little bit more, uh, 8,500 it starts getting grumpy. 8,400 it's okay with. The conrods, the crank and so on, going to go to 10k. Um, in fact, actually, we can probably get that up more. Um, can we get that up more and then save it slightly, the valves slightly start uh, kind of having issues, shall we say? I think that is a, an inbuilt kind of a, uh, I don't know, ah, right, so if we go more aggressive cam profile, we can get away with more RPMs, and that's what I like. <laughs> we can get away with potentially 
So this is going to be like a screaming three-cylinder. I want 300 horsepower out of my screaming three-cylinder. Uh, can we then get away with... Oh, okay, so it still does sort of start to explode a little bit. We're going to go to 9,000. Oh, I, like, I like this a lot. There we go. Now, if we go too much, I do still want to keep it vaguely, vaguely decent in terms of miles a gallon here. Oh, we are really pushing what we can do... Uh, what I can probably do, really, with this. Uh, oh, what can we do with exhaust? Can I get anything out of... Nope. That, that was literally spot on. Uh, you know, messing around with turbos is a quick way for me to break everything in the car. Uh, <laughs> my, my ability with uh, adjusting the, the turbos of this stuff here is not great. See, I kind of set everything up with it uh, being at this area. Uh, and it was pretty damn good <laughs> we kind of got the most out of uh there we go 300 horsepower uh 300 horsepower we're still at 21 percent fuel efficiency value which is not too shabby it'll probably equate to around the 20 ish miles a gallon by the time we are finished with it and we get 9,000 rpm out of our <laughs> 1.8 liter three-cylinder engine I'm not sure it's going to sound amazing, but let's go and give it a try. Um... <laughs> I, I, I will be honest, I have built considerably better sounding engines than uh, than this one. It is a little bit on the uh, kind of like a bag of bolts being shaken around. However, you know, <laughs> 300 horsepower out of a fairly damn small engine. Out of a fairly damn small engine indeed. I'm not too displeased with that. That's that's a pretty decent amount of power, I reckon, for our for our vehicle. Now we are going to be wanting it, of course, rear wheel drive in this manual. We're gonna go for a six speed on it. It, it reckons it will do 163 miles an hour. You know what? Have a have at it. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna gear it a little bit longer because sometimes the game uh, lies essentially with the uh, with the top speed. So let's see if we can get 170 out of it. We'll gear it for 170. We'll see if it can do it. Uh, we'll go with a geared LSD. I also like how, again, this is new as well. Uh, speed limiter going on. Uh, you can, so, if you want to build, you know, or, or replicate the German super saloons and the, the German uh, luxury cars, if you like, with a 155 mile an hour limiter and, and so on, you can put that on your vehicles if you want. It's a cool little feature that uh, they have there. Engine bay is very full. I did kind of push the, the, the limit slightly with how much I could do with the uh, with the old engine going on in there. Uh, tires, we will go for... Uh, shall we go for some medium? Medium compound seems a good way. A good compromise between sort of drivability and everything. That sounds like a plan. Front tires. Uh, ooh, we can get some nice big tires on there. Shall we go 275 rears? Ah, that's more like it. Look at those. <laughs> They might be a bit big for a, um, a hot hatch. Only two five fives, two three fives, uh, two forties. Uh, sure. And my, my real life car, the RX eight, is on. I think it's on two two fives. Is the uh, tires that it that it comes with? So, <laughs> yeah, they are. They are, they are not small tires we've got going on with this one. Let's go for some alloy wheels. Uh, sure. Oh, we didn't change the wheels. Bugger. Got to do that, and if we jump back here, yes, it is here. We can do. Oh, we didn't give it a fuel filler cap either. While we're here, that's an important, important thing. Uh, fuel cap. There we go. Gonna need to be able to put petrol in it. Hopefully, it's not gonna go through petrol quite as badly as most of my cars do. <laughs> However, probably a good idea. Ooh, while we are here, people did say. I'm hoping I'm not gonna ooh, screw this all up. Um. There is a way to get it to remove the body, and I can't for the life of me remember how to do it. So you can see how the engine fitted in the chassis rather than trying to phase through it, but I can't remember, and I don't want to go and bugger it all up. So, um, yeah, to see how much the uh, the engine fill is in there. That's not too bad. I've built a lot worse, I think, in terms of, uh, <laughs> in terms of engines. Right, discs. We'll go for some vented discs at the front, some solid discs at the rear. It's going to be a pretty quick car. That's the hope, at least. So we want some decent-sized brakes for this, and we are going to want 60-40. I just prefer it being a, 
a, a nicer, evener number. Uh, will we have any fancy? No, bugger that. Don't, don't, don't really need to worry about that. Uh, we will go for some uh, better brake airflow, cooling airflow. I don't really, I just don't really need to worry about that. It's, uh, it kind of comes with the the required amount. We need to, yeah, keep the engine cool. Uh, at the moment, with the way this sort of stuff working, isn't too. Too important for now. I'm sure that'll be added sort of further down the line. Not really worried about active aero and all of that kind of stuff on this. It's supposed to be a, a fun hot hatch more than more than anything. Right. So interior. Uh, do we go so basic? A standard interior. Premium. Sport. Sport is quite expensive. It is lighter. It's lighter than everything, but basic. Uh, however, a fair amount of expense. Because it's not going to be handmade. Not going to be luxury. Um. I mean, I guess we're going to be competing up against things like the BMW 1 Series, Focus RS, and those kind of cars. So let's go premium. Uh, probably more like the Megane RS. Focus RS is a little bit more of a super hatch than uh, <laughs> than this thing. So yeah, we'll we'll go premium. You know, we'll go premium. Premium sat nav as well on here. Some comfort, some prestige, uh, overall uh, assists, etc. Well, we want sportiness really to be as high as possible. Um, we're tempted to run it with none, but then drivability suffers, uh, which we don't necessarily want. So electric variable, probably the way to go. We can get some uh, electric stability control, some launch control on the car. Sure. That's the only one that adds uh, sportiness in all of this. Sure, we want sportiness. Uh, safety, we're going to go with um, advanced, of course. <laughs> okay, we go for a little bit more of the, the, the premium uh, area with this car than we have perhaps done previously springs we want some sportiness on the go here uh, i mean active sport that's probably the best way to go again these are going to be a bit more expensive going for sort of semi-active uh or maybe we go for a no bugger we'll go semi-active and there we go let's set it up for uh, sport race it's 23 miles a gallon which is better than i normally end up doing with uh, <laughs> with my cars car roll angle is Hi, ham harming, sorry, handling and comfort. Employ stiffer sway bars. So I guess if we up this a little bit, that'll uh, increase. Ooh, that's too much. That's blowing the tires to bits. Okay, maybe not quite that stiffer uh, the roll bar. Uh, brake suffer from brake fade, reducing drivability and sportiness. Increase brake size. I can do that. I can There's plenty of brake size to go. 240 there. If we go to. So let's. Okay, well, there's, there's a sweet spot somewhere in there. 295. Uh, yeah, 295. There, is that going to the brake fade? The brakes are slight brake fade. Oh, still showing sh slight brake fade. I guess we'll just up there. Maybe we'll just go vented discs at the back. That makes sense, wouldn't it, really? Uh, <laughs> I think I'm getting... I'm starting to get to the stage where that's starting to get uh, now quite... Um, still showing slight brake fade. I am surprised. Oh, hold on. It's better with two pistons than four. Oh, four pistons made affordability. Oh, in the fun premium category, family sport. I mean, it's kind of in the right category here. Has that got rid of the... Still showing brake fade. Let's whack that up a bit. Oh, no. that People don't like it when you have really race-orientated brake pads. It uh, ruins their, their comfort and whatnot. Has that got... Still showing slight brake. I guess I'll just max out the discs then. But then we max out the discs then... <laughs> It gets, uh, I don't know why it then starts going, oh, where's the brake here, uh, where was the brake fade? There was a brake fade thing that I was seeing somewhere that I can't now find. Um, got rid of the brake fade though, that's good. Car tends to oversteer. I mean, I'd rather that, I'll be honest, I would I would rather be having an oversteer either. Wait, hold on, what? Um, car tends to oversteer. Front dampers are hard, so if we reduce the front dampers you see I, I feel like sometimes the the information here is less than helpful um because i fiddle around with as it would recommend and then the competitiveness and stuff goes down and then when i don't and when i go in the opposite direction i'm i'm going to ignore all of this now you're telling me the brakes i don't care shush uh, <laughs> right oh we're we're a fraction of horsepower wise down on what I want to be, so there we go. I've got to get, I've got to get that last squeeze, that last bit of power out of it. There we go, three hundred point eight. It was, it was in, it was in points, so that's more like it. Three hundred horsepower, engine base rifle not changing that. 
the, the front the brakes were overheating so it made a massive so they're fine i'm ignoring the dampest thing because that seems useless the car tends to oversteer which i'm okay with but that seems to suggest it as understeering kind of oversteers initially and then it understeers massively it kind of oversteers up until like 30 or 40 and then it suddenly hits that point and understeers so don't quite know why that is um there are we can like fiddle around with this sort of stuff uh, that's actually making it less sporty apparently Ooh. If we go to the wrong camber setting, it just blows the tyres to pieces. Um, that sportiness is now at 100, which is good. Is it? If we go uh, sort of positive, well, not positive, but we remove the camber off the back, we can then make it go oversteer. There we go. <laughs> it's a little bit of a faff trying to uh, trying to get it to do what it wants, but there we go. 100% sportiness sounds fun to me, and that will be that. That will be our car. Just gonna have a quick look at the uh, at the market. I mean, it's it's basically where we wanted it. Uh, where we wanted to be, fun, fun premium, uh, family sport, family sport premium. It's kind of even vaguely a muscle car, apparently. Uh, <laughs> yes, a three cylinder turbo <laughs> is a muscle car. Uh, I, I think the verbal sports budget thing might be a little bit bugged. That always seems to come up. Utility sport premium as well. Again, family utility premium. It is. Along those along those lines, if you like, for a hot hatch, it's supposed to be a, a usable everyday car, uh, fun premium. It's perfect. I say it's perfect. It's it's very good as a fun premium sport. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I think our our canna won't have the. I think you have to run the car on normal fuel rather than premium fuel if you want cars to go here. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with uh with all of that shall we go and send the bag of bolts for a drive around this uh, around this circuit the top gear the equivalent of the top gear test track top speed 157 we could probably get away actually with uh fiddling around with the gear ratios a little bit in the car if anything not 67.7 seconds not the fastest we have seen no but uh, it could be, this could be a little bit better. It's, it's not the worst imaginable, but uh, yeah, it could be a tad, a tad bit uh, better. Apparently, you can tow 2,400 kilos. Lap time 129.7 from the car. I will go and fiddle around with the gearbox ever so slightly. That's then here, isn't it? Um, because yeah, we don't actually need to have it that uh, that far up. Uh, okay, apparently the, when we stick the gears down all the way over here, it makes the car considerably more fun. Uh, <laughs> 156. So, adjusted, adjusting the gearbox, let's go send it around again. So it's a 29 something. Uh, it hasn't actually really made much difference to uh, any of that. So we'll, I guess we'll go and have a look again and see if it's see if it's improved at all. Yeah, I quite like it. It's not bad, considering vastly restricted in terms of engine bay in terms of engine space 23 not much difference with the uh, different gearbox although it did improve its uh market area slightly i think um yeah for for a three cylinder car for a, <laughs> a one point was it a 1.8 liter three cylinder 300 horsepower 9000 rpm to play around with pretty happy with it Pretty happy with it indeed, and built you know built something a little bit different. I'm liking all the new, uh, the new fixtures and so on. Oh, they've got changed. They're the wrong. It's got the wrong tail lights on it now. But someone's been sneakily changing stuff on my car. God damn it! Uh, <laughs> that is uh, is going to be it though for this for this video. As ever, if you've got challenges, you know, different sort of cars you want to see me build on this game, please do let me know in the comments, and I will hopefully get around to building them at uh, some point if people continue to enjoy these uh, automation videos. Thank you very much, though, for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.